Hi, Matt. Hi, everybody. She, you have a handheld. I have a handheld. You have a face held. Yeah, I feel like it's CBS Sunday morning. Holy Hi. sh! I don't. I feel self-conscious. <laughs> kind of pushes you forward. This I chair, know doesn't it? Does. It just like brings you right Push, out to the audience. Pushes my tits out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said yay. Pushes my tits out. I don't know. I got to talk into my mic. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Wow. Congrats. Yeah, I'm gonna, I have it. I'm going to Instagram stream live this thing. Start live video. Checking connection. Hold on. <laughs> I love this. I love this technology. Oh, it's happening. Look at us. Hi. Hi. Hi, people. If we, no, I don't know. I want to turn and show everybody. Yay. <laughs> so I'm going to, I might give this to a Alex. Do you mind shooting this? Because I feel like I, this would be a terrible way to live my life, just like this. <laughs> Uh, and I think it's on, and it's shooting forward, and that's it, and my code. I can tell you my code if you need it. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to this really weird idea. And, I, it's, gonna, and it's only going to get weirder yeah, from so, here. Yeah, so just do we even – I need this, I guess. Yeah, I, it was a pleasure to invite yeah. you. Way to go! Way to get those tickets in the first 21 seconds or whatever. <laughs> I mean, you are, must be crazy super fans because that thing was gone. It's awesome. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's good. We're gonna we're, we're gonna do. Uh, you guys got the. We're gonna do like um. What's that called with the circles and the different colors and the. Yeah. Twister. Yeah. Yeah. Bang die. Like, you guys are like. Uh, apparently, I'm. I don't even do drugs. <laughs> I should have done drugs. Would you like me to say something? Or are you? Gonna yeah. Monologue well, no. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. I just want to. Who's in charge? No, here, you are in charge. Okay, but I, it doesn't feel like it, Matt. I'm just getting used to it. Getting used to it. All right, yeah. it's good. It's good. All right, good. Uh, so before we dive into this thing, w oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the gloves are off, people. Um, we do have a little bit of an announcement. Oh my God, yes. We're kind of in cahoots on something. Do you want to announce? Uh, I feel like I've taken too much of this experience already. Do it. Take it home. We, Kelly Corrigan. New York Times best-selling author and friend of mine. <laughs> and myself, born in New Hampshire, <laughs> Boston, friend of Jonah's. We, uh, we, uh, that's about it for me. I, uh, we are starting a book club. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and, and we aren't quite sure when it's starting. No, it's starting right oh, now. Oh, it's starting now. It is, Matt. So and, and we have a book to announce. Oh, my God. We have our, it's a website. our inaugural oh, we're book. We're so dialed in. <laughs> Look at this. Website for the book club. Facebook.com slash groups. They couldn't have figured out a smaller one of these? <laughs> Zero two X capital Z. <laughs> our moms came up with it. P poop emoji. Right. <laughs> my mom doesn't know what a poop emoji is. She said, I don't even want to know what that is. I hope I die before I find out what that is. Facebook.com slash groups slash, it's called doing it in the nook. And that's doing without a G. Because in Kelly's house, there's a book nook. And we thought like, oh, this is nice. You know, we made sure, well, it's not just Kelly's house. <laughs> yeah, way. it's Edward's house too. Those socks are incredible. Are those yeah. socks the cover of Synchronicity by the police? Yeah. Those are the best <laughs> socks I've ever seen. Is no. it really? No. I have stood here before. I don't have my phone. I gave it away. Oh, no. He's got so, a record with Shaggy. So, uh, this book club. <laughs> I know. Oh, no, book club. We, we're in this like one and a half book minutes club. and we're just shot to hell. Book club. So this is what book club's going to be like, too. So yes. whatever. You guys are going to want to be a part of the book club because we're going to pick a great book. Yes. Which we already have. Yes, we do. What book? It's called Half a Yellow Sun. Do you know it? Yeah. By Chimamanda Adichie Ad Adebe. Negoche Adichie. That's it. I've never said it out loud, actually. That's the first time. But I have read it a bunch and been like, I'd like a name that's that beautiful. Yeah. So I'm thinking of changing my name. So do you know that Matt's a huge reader? Like, plows. I mean, I bet you read 20, 25 books a year. I'm not. Li you read the more books than that. you and no Stephen way. King. No way. I yeah. like drift off into my book. I have to drink a pot of coffee to stay awake. Oh, there it is. Oh. Oh, here we go. Dude. Way to go. Uh, so this is the first book that we're gonna do in our book club, and there's the book club. You probably you definitely that? can't Look see this. Look at all those cameras up. You can't see that, can you? 
Facebook.com slash groups slash, what is it? Doing it in the doing nook. It in the and nook. there's no G in doing. Because when you're doing it. Yeah, you don't have time for a G. You don't have time for a G. <laughs> All right. So start reading. Get it. It's it's for sale here. Start reading it, and then maybe a month, two months, we'll have a big. We'll, con yeah. we'll convene on Facebook. Yeah, we're trying to figure out like what's a proper amount of time for somebody to read a book in this day and age where nobody has a an, absolutely any uh, focus. And so, like, this is a 536-page book. One month. One month. What are you, a speed reader? I like it. Okay. I like the way you work it. We thought sometime in 2019. Yeah, we were so thinking. We're, we're super, super encouraged. We were thinking when the president changes hands. <laughs> Hopefully that'll be in a couple of weeks. Uh, sorry. I shouldn't have gotten political. So fast. So fast. That's my favorite thing 537, about. 537. We got to it. My favorite thing about the internet is how people, when, I, when you talk about things that are actually uh, human, like human stories, and they'll be like, you've got to get all political. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's actually political. But what I just said was. Okay, good. <laughs> Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Uh, this book destroyed me and in the best way. And so this is going to be the first book we decided. Yeah. And uh, it's for sale if anybody wants to buy it here. And then also libraries have it. I checked. My library has it. And uh, there's a wait list for it. Which, oh, did, did you, you just look it up? Are you on the SF, <laughs> SF website for the... Oh, oh, that's nice. All right. If you want, I can put it, yeah, come, the Bernal Heights, I've got it there. I got it. All right, enough, enough of me. I've hijacked this moment. But yeah. Look at how substantial this book is. By the end of this, you're going to feel so good about yourself and so bad about politics in Nigeria. Yeah. Really selling it. <laughs> the, the sign ups are off the hook, Matt. Uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Get ready to be so, super sad. I think 25 years ago, you released your first album. And I think this is the ninth. Is that possible? That that's about true? Yeah, that all sounds right. <laughs> 25 years ago, I released my first record. Please? I have it right here. Right Please. Here. There it is. Uh, that's a very unattractive. We can play it. Yeah. <laughs> that's OK. You can keep that. Uh, <laughs> My fr Jonah, the kid right there, sang all the background vocals. Oh. My friend Jonah, very exciting. And uh, I don't play any of those songs now. <laughs> and if you put it on, you'll know why. But I do enjoy it. It's a nice piece of history. That's fan fantastic. A thrift store in Selma. Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> it was. It. it was. It was in the ten cent bin. You guys. It, it being this successful is a struggle. <laughs> you have no idea. Like every day, I get up and I'm like, "Do I have to be famous? This famous again?" Right. Uh, uh, how different or not different? That different at all is your songwriting now than God. it was 25 years ago. Like, are you better at it? Is it easier? It is not easier. Um, I think I was more uh, confident then than I am now. Like in a, ha a youthful, I was just, yeah, oblivious. Yeah, naive and uh -huh. sort of like, yeah, I'll, I'm going to write a song about this. And then I would write a song about this. and um, But the songs were really not all that good. And, and when you set out, did you have a person that you were like, I'm going to be like? Yeah, I think at first when I was a kid, I really wanted to be Joe Elliott in Def Leppard. I wanted to wear leather pants. Really? Uh, yeah, and I, and I used to sausage myself into my mom's leather pants. <laughs> When I was a kid, and then I would do Matt like... Matt Nathanson, cross-dresser. Yeah. And I would do splits off her bed and like hit my head into her dresser. And then and Joe Elliott wore this Union Jack t-shirt with sleeves cut off, and you could, you could order it from the back of Circus Magazine, but I, was a f I didn't know how to do that, so I just made one out of colored markers. Oh. And then when my buddy Nick and I did like a lip sync contest at school, we sw I sweat, and then all the markers stuck to my body. <laughs> So when I took off the shirt, it was just like the Union Jack emblazoned oh. on my young, heavy set chest. <laughs> so it was good. It was a good time. But uh, I wanted to be Joe Elliott. Hashtag killing it. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to be in Def Leppard. And then when I realized that I couldn't sing like that and I couldn't play guitar like those people, I was never that good. Uh, I, I, the folk movement happened. The Indigo Girls, Tracy Chapman. I grew up in Boston. And uh, Suzanne Vega. 
Mm -hmm. And so all that happened, and I was like, oh, you can make lyrics that have more to say than, like, gasoline, you want to pump me, which is what <laughs> Poison lyrics said. So, uh, and so I learned that maybe my songs could have some <laughs> heft. And so I started writing these sort of confessional man folk jams. Yeah. <laughs> what was the first song you wrote that you really liked? Because you said Ooh. recently that you actually like listening to this album, and that's like a new territory for you. Yeah. You I can actually relax and forget that it's you and stop criticizing yourself and that's silence the inner assassin. And yeah, all. that's a really great question. And I don't know when the first song I wrote when I was actually like played it for people. I wasn't the per I'm not the person who finishes a song and says, like, oh, my God, i got to play this for you. <laughs> like, I don't s pull my wife aside and say, dude, play this song. I don't pull like my friends aside. It just isn't my thing. And so I guess it's funny. I can't go all the way back to the first song I remember, but with this record, we did a demo of a song called Used to Be, which is on this record. And I remember driving around. I wrote a little bit about this, but I drove around Los Angeles after we recorded uh, We recorded the demo, just basic like piano and me singing. It was this kid, Sean Douglas, and I wrote it. And he lives in, L in Los Feliz. And so I drove around his streets listening to this thing over and over again and just like was kind of overwhelmed by how I guess how good it was that wasn't really it it was like how much it moved me to hear this thing and it was it was so moving that I didn't even think of myself as the person singing it I just heard it and was like man this song is effective like I don't know I, it, it, and I was able to distance myself from myself and I think that uh, allowed me to really enjoy listening to it. And so that was really one of the few times in my life that that's ever happened, where maybe when we finished, like, Come On Get Higher, and I remember listening to it, but I remember thinking, oh, it's too fast, because the drum pushes, and there's a push in the guitar, and, I, and uh, you know, my brain wants to kind of take apart things. And so it did that for every record. And then with this, with the demo for that song in particular, I was really like, wow, this is super good. Like, uh, whoever did this is is... Is, yeah. is somebody I can get behind. And then yeah. I, was like, I was like, oh, that's me. But uh, so, so it's rare. I really do not like listening to my stuff. I don't like playing people my stuff that much. Uh, I don't like, yeah. is the Is the car ride part of your process generally? Because it seems like yeah. a thing that a musician would want to do is drive around and listen to it and see if it kind of holds together under that. Yeah, I used to drive a lot. I used to drive on tour. So uh, that used to be the way I got to shows. And so we would do, I do tours of the U.S. in a car and you just listen to music all the time. Yeah. And I, and, uh, I never listen to myself. But, um, but you could listen to, that's really where most of the listening takes place. And so now I have kind of these voice notes of all these ideas that I keep in my phone. And sometimes I'll flip over to them while I'm walking with my headphones. I, we only have one, we have one car in my family in my household here in San Francisco because I use public transportation a lot. And I also have this van that I used to tour in. Radical that I lefty. still has that has like, yeah. it has like 300,000 miles on it. Not very lefty of me. Yeah, it's yeah. literally like, as it's like you're literally killing the dinosaurs as you're driving, right. like just, just sucking their <laughs> essence out of the ground. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, I sometimes will listen to my little voice notes of ideas. And, it, and really it's about forgetting that I'm involved. And then once I forget I'm involved, I can see it from this perspective of being like, Oh, wow, that's a really strong melody. That's great. Or, oh, that's a neat lyric. Wow. It happens a lot when people post on Twitter um, where they'll post like a lyric of mine and I'll read it and I'll be like, yeah, who wrote that? <laughs> like, that's totally happens. Like, no joke. Like, yeah. I'll read it and I'll be like, yeah, I mean, that is so good. And I'll be like, I wrote that, I guess. <laughs> like, it'll happen after the fact. So, uh, yeah. Do they ever misquote you? I've been misquoted a lot yes. in the world and it's really a uh, bummer. Dude, here's, here's the, yeah, it's a bummer when, uh, I did that to an author once actually when I, in, I saw um, Chuck Klosterman. Sure. And his book is called Killing Yourself to Live or Killing Myself to Live. I think it's Killing Yourself to Live and I tapped him on the shoulder and he turned around and I was like, Chuck, I love your book, Killing and it's killing yourself to like, I totally gave the wrong name. He just looked so bummed. Like he just turned it, he was just like, thanks man. And then he walked away. Yeah. And it's kind of like what happens when people, I'll look out in the audience even now and they'll be, uh, my, my biggest song is Come On Get Higher and I watch like 80% eh, of, the, of the crowd screw up the chorus. <laughs> uh, but, but you see it happen, like they'll be like, not you guys, you guys always get it. But it's like, but like, they'll say, pull me down hard and drown me in love is the lyric. And people don't think it's pull me down hard. So they'll sing that one and they'll be like, like, 
something something totally different. And I'll be like, well, God bless. Get me some butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's, it's incredible. I'm like, thank you for for this moment. <laughs> yeah. It's not about me. And when you're in that, once you have sort of the basics of a song and you listen to it in the car and you think that it has potential, how often is there a rub between you and whoever you're working with about, like you said, pushing the drums in Come On, Get Higher? Like it's to you, it seemed too fast. Yeah. But that's the way it went out. Yeah. So and, how and, often? And it worked actually for that song. But yeah, that happens a lot. As I get older and I get a little bit, I come to the, this record was, a real strong realization that like nobody actually knows what's good um, and that nobody actually knows what will work and that nobody and so my, my manager is probably the best version of that my manager my manager Jonathan has an incredible ear for things and he's really good at picking out things that feel special but even with him it's like it's it's sort of like what we talked about before about when you when you wish that someone like we've had this experience in the last week where you people have thought that the senators were going to vote a certain way for a certain thing. And, and, and I've come to terms with the fact that I don't really want to count on anybody's... To, anybody. I, my happiness can't depend on anybody's decision because everybody's got their own... Everybody's got their own weight and their own filter and their own prism that they see the world through. And so the less you can... You, you have to believe in people, but you can't count on them. <laughs> and so the less I can count on somebody to make me happy... So it was the kind of thing with where you look out and we're like, somebody's got to vote to get this guy. And it's like, look, you, you have no idea what anybody's going to do. They, they're going to do whatever they do. Their desperation button has been pushed. And it's the same thing with music. It's like... Whatever people like, like uh, nobody likes music like I like music. Nobody likes music like you like music. Right, nobody right. listens to it's art. Yeah, it's it's just like, but even even the art, it's like most people really just don't like music. Like most people like it as like a background thing that they put on when they make eggs. And like to me, music is like something that I would rather I would rather have that around than humans. And so it's like to me, music is like so crucial that I took I take it so seriously that it gets in the way of my creating it. That just happened mm -hmm. to you when you write. Mm -hmm. It's like I love music so much that it it makes it so difficult for me to just get out of the way and just express myself because I'm so ex because I've read so many books, yeah. I've listened to so many people talk about great records, right. and I want so badly to move the world with a song I write because I'm a people pleasing sort of like, and I have a hole in me, and so it's like, but so <laughs> but as I get older. Right. But as we get older, we start to realize, at least at our best, that we don't that nobody really matters except our intimate circle of people. And that, like, all we really have to do is please ourselves because that's the key. And so I feel like this record is the beginning of really realizing that for me, uh, where I kind of just people would say, well, I don't know if that song's good. And I say, well, I'm going to finish it the way I want to finish it. Right, and then right. you tell me what you think about it. Last couple records was kind of like, people would say, that's great, that's done. And I'd be like, oh, it is? Okay. Yes. Like, yeah, and, you know. Which you... is terrible. It's a yeah. terrible temptation to have your B-plus work yeah. and then hand it off to an editor, in my case at Random House, and have them say, it's great. Yeah. And then, like, my little lazy Let's... person on yeah. my shoulder is like, well, I guess if he said it's great, like, maybe it's done. And yeah. then my other piece is like, you know it's not done. Yeah. You know it needs more. And and to but, but it is the ultimate luxury to get to make art for a living oh, and yeah. get to live and die by your own efforts. It's like, the best. It's like, and that's what, like, truly that's everybody here's you guys do that like I, I that's the reason i get to we get to do this is like you guys bought tickets the minute they went on sale and you come and we get to put this on and we get to do it it's like you perpetuate this thing in a really great way and that's why you kind of always have to honor uh the folks that come to the shows or that buy the books or that kind of stuff it doesn't mean you have to cater to them it just means you have to honor them because if it wasn't for them you wouldn't be able to do it and and like it's sort of like raising your kids like how many times have you had people tell you like i have it all the time where somebody's like you know, well, why are you doing this? It's like, it's my fucking kid. Like, I, like you go fuck up your kid. I'm going to fuck up my kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like if I wanted your opinion, I would have said, hey, can you give me your opinion about right. my fucking kid? Right. Because most of the time it's like, I don't care. I don't, I don't, like what you know and what the shoot you came down in life is not my shoot. So like, why do you think we're going to even speak the same fucking language about right. how to raise a kid? Right. And it's the same thing with music. And it's fascinating because... Music now more than ever is so based on like, like number of likes, clicks, that kind of stuff, and it's a strange. It's so immediate. Yeah, and you sort of feel this, and everybody has this reaction to something. But it's like music is something you need to kind of marinate in, like books. Like Sit you, with. yeah, you need to let it kind of soak into your universe, 
And sometimes a book or an album takes on a different uh, shape or a different meaning to you later. And so it's just like all we can do is just try and be as true to ourselves as we can and then put it into the universe and hope that people, uh, you know, pay for it enough that we can do it again. I know. I always think that just like, let me sell enough copies to do it again. Yeah, totally. So how sad are you? How sad were you or are you? Very sad. (laughs) (laughs) I guess guess it's right there in the title of the album. Um, I'm the saddest, Kelly. Yeah. By the way, that's totally not my Twitter handle, but we'll get to that later. Um, Some other Kelly Corrigan right I now. I can't wait to find out. That's who so is awesome. It. Some other Kelly Corrigan is like, Jesus yeah. Christ. Right. <laughs> I am blowing up. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, awesome. I loved my book too. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, where did you get it? <laughs> Um, how sad were you when, when it switched from like being able to deliver an album that you had some modicum of hope that a person would sit through the whole thing and you were creating, cause you, you, you have to be creating differently based on the new model. Yeah. I love the new model actually. You I do? S- yeah. I still go to record stores and buy records. I still buy vinyl cause I feel like some records really need to be experienced in that way for me. But I, st- I love the singles aspect of today, like picking through Spotify and making playlists. And um, so for me, I kind of make, I try just to make every song feel as exciting as it can, you know, as good as it can. You kind of want to like, because I have no idea how the world's going to take it. This might be the last record. Or how they even receive it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Do, are they even aware that there are nine other songs? Right, that's what I mean. It's And usually even back in the day, people weren't really aware of that there were nine other songs. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when you go to see Journey, like, even though uh, uh, thousands of people or millions of people bought Escape, you know, very rarely would not someone know the 10th song on Escape. Do you remember know? when you, like, would try to get it right on your, um, like, yeah. cassette tape? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get to the beginning of the song? <laughs> That's the way it was, honey. <laughs> Incredible! I had eight tracks. I, oh, totally. I broke, we had so eight we, tracks. I broke so many eight tracks at my house. Kiss Alive too, and Pieces. Uh, what was if? What's an album that you think of as start to finish? Is just like oh my god, there's so many. I just listened to Making Movies, Dire Straits. Oh, that's a perfect record. It's so good. Yeah, that, I mean, uh, uh, like, whew, that's a great record. I stole that. I lived in France when I was in high school, and I. I didn't you did? Steal it, Why I, did you live in France when you were in high school? Fancy. I was, uh, I wanted to, it's tough. I told you, uh, very successful. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew that when I was in high school. So I wanted to go find my, no, I, uh, my high school was pretty progressive and very kind of hippie. And they started a school in France, which was really just two instructors. And it would, kids could go like, Eight kids could go abroad, and you lived with people. There was another school in Spain. Can you speak French right now? Spain. I used to be able to speak it perfectly. I definitely cannot now. It's Dude, gone. you should write a song in French, shouldn't he? How hot would that be? Thanks. Oh my god. Thanks. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> but yeah, and then my high school had this crazy thing called Mountain Classroom that they still have, which I did, which is where you lived on. In I li- went to school in New Hampshire in the woods, and uh, woods, woods, <laughs> and on the property in the deep, like, one edge of the campus, there was a little house, and people would live there, and you'd learn about part of the United States, and then for, like, a month and a half, and then you'd climb into a van with two teachers, and you'd drive across country and camp, and then... And then they'd murder you. And then they... uh, (laughs) It was a game. It was like... It was called where where and who will wear who will wear your skin. Weren't you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was incredible. That's so sad that that's where we all were, isn't it? It needs who, to be like that. Who will wear your skin was the name of the game. <laughs> but no, so uh, I went to a hippie high school and w- lived in France, and I stole, I didn't steal, but my French mother gave me the CD of making movies because I loved it so much. Aww. Yeah, so that's a long, really long story. <laughs> but yeah, so perfect album, straight to start to finish. There's so many, but I would say Octung Baby is the first one that comes to mind. Uh, Lou Reed, New York. Um, Lou Reed is so where it's at. We just watched a movie yeah. and he was the soundtrack and it was uh, just brought him all back to us. Super good. Um, 
There's there's many, but those are the two that first come to mind. But I mean, the Violent Femmes' first record. Oh yeah. Uh, we were talking. Joan and I were talking about like best debut albums, which in and of itself is a hard enough thing to get. But like, Appetite for Destruction, the you know the first Modern Lovers record. These are like there's so many people used to make really great. Harvest. I listened to Harvest the other day. Oh yeah, that's, that's sad. That would break your record. heart, right? Oh my god. Do you like sad? Because you like sad. I love sad. <laughs> you do. Sad is my friend. So t- let, I want to talk about like maybe four or five different songs on the album. Yeah. Um, and then I want you to play some, right? Yeah. I could keep talking. He just wants to talk and talk, but I said he has to play. Yeah. Okay. Um, so sadness. It's the, sad. You like it. It is. Oh my god, that was awesome that you did that. That's great. I'm so psyched. Um, so talk about the writing it, talk about recording it, talk about what you like about it. Oh, okay. I wrote it with this guy. Um, Amir? No, I didn't write it with Amir. I wrote it with... That's what it says right here. Who do I... What's what about, his name? What about Adam? No. Stacy? No, so these I wrote songs with all those guys. But what's his name? The guy that we kind of didn't... I hate to, anyway, he's all right. Ah! He was all oh right. Oh my God. But so we wrote we wrote it together and uh, really it came down to, I had the lyric, I had this lyric um, because I never really write love songs about my lady uh, because it's really hard to do. And so, but I had this line in my journal that said, sadness used to think that it owned me but now sadness has to share me with you. Because it's sort of this idea that you don't really solve the problems that are your problems when you get into a relationship, no matter how great the person is that you're in a relationship with, because you really do live and die alone. And so it's like it's all you trying to like j- figure out your journey. And so this idea was, um, I'm glad you're with me on this journey because the two of us in this, in this brain, it's way more fun than just me and sadness. And so uh, I had this line, and the guy we, I wrote it with. Um, oh, what's his name? <laughs> Old oh, who's Busby. Butts? Yeah, yeah, no, Busby. He's a nice enough guy. But so Busby and I wrote this song, and he was bummed out. He was super bummed out that it was. He was super bummed out that it was called sadness, and that that was the lyric. Like he wanted it to be I love this that sort of lyric. up. He wanted this to be this up tempo, ex- like sort of fun thing. And I was like, yeah, man. So I've got this lyric, and he's like, yeah. What were we gonna call the song? And I was like, sadness. He's like, ugh. <laughs> And I was like, "Great, man! Thanks. This has been fun." And but we, uh, but he's really. It must he was be good, when your name's on the record, you really can call good. it whatever you want. Oh, he's very successful, and he's really good, actually. And he was uh, really. I went to him because I, I was trying to like find a different way into these songs melodically, and so his melody sense was really strong. And so I would defer to him on melodies, and then I would help kind of be like, "Oh, what if we did this?" And then we'd move it and we'd shape it. But the lyrics, I wrote them all by myself, and. Uh, and so we sort of did the chords and the melodies together, and then I took the song away and wrote the lyrics. And uh, really, it was just about, it's kind of a love song in a real way. That's kind of how I see it. And it's, you know, uh, yeah, th- you got to get low to get high. He came up with that idea, and I was like, I don't know, that feels, okay. You know, like that feels kind of, I was trying to fit it in, because that's a positive, but sadness was such a sad idea. And I really wanted this to be kind of a heavy, heavy song. But the, mm-hmm. then there's this hook that's like, you got to get low to get high. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no, but that's totally right. And, th- you know, and then I sort of started m- mushing it together. The songwriting process with other people is really strange because you meet them for the first time and then it's like, get naked. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And it's like sometimes you're really super, it's super fun. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> like you're like, let's get naked. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sometimes you're like, yeah, let's get naked. This is great. And then sometimes you're like. I do not want you to see me this way. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, but, but really what I like to do is take the little kernels that we, if there's good momentum, you, I like to take those little kernels with me, take them home and then kind of s- stew in them at my, and then if, when it goes really well, you write a whole song in one sitting with somebody and you feel so dialed in and you're saying lines and they're saying lines and it's like, oh my God, that's so good. What about this? And you're inspiring each other to keep going. So this is really stupid and I can't believe I've never asked you this before, but when you're doing this back and forth, do you already have the music in mind? 
So it just depends. Sometimes I come in with full chorus ideas. Sometimes with like lyrics and everything, and I'll say, you kind of sit down and you say, "Hey, I've got this idea. I've got a bunch of ideas. Let me just lay them out. Tell me what one kind of turns you on." And so you'll be like, "I had this one thing," and you'll you, like, for example, a bunch of songs on the record started as poems that I wrote, and I'd sort of say, "Hey, I've got these poems," and uh, and I would read them, and 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 the person would say, "Well, that's a that's a cor-. they they recognize they might be able to recognize something in it that you don't see." Uh-huh. So you'll read down, and they'll be like, "Dude, that should be the chorus." Like uh, the the song, um, not to switch topic, but like used to be. There's I had this thing that's like I got a PhD. I have a PhD in the way it used to be, and I'm reading this thing and this and there's a bunch of words, and he's like, "That's that's great." That's great. And then we got to that, he's like, "Dude, we got to write a song about that." And I was like, "Rad." And then he got on the piano, and I got on the guitar, and then it sort of just like bleh, just came out. And how much experimenting do you do? Like once you have, um, like way way back, I was listening to and thinking about how many different ways you could have done the instrumentation on that and the tone and the beat and the pacing and like you just have so much to work with as a person who just has words on a page. I found myself evaluating your music with so much envy. Like, God, if I could, if I had these tools, I could really get through to somebody. Well, you you could, yeah. Like music allows you to cheat very well because you you, think about it. People get away with really terrible lyrics. (laughs) But if it's but if it's but if it's sung in this voice with a melody against a chord, it can make you like cry. And so all of a sudden, you're moved by like like uh, objects in the rearview mirror may appear closer than they are. That like right, that meatloaf right. song, or or you know like a, what was the other the big meatloaf song uh, on that record was uh, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Which yeah. is like that's an awful. <laughs> like that is awful. Like and straight up, I heard it in the car. When I was driving, it came on the radio, and I had to pull my car over because I was so moved. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. At the time, my my girlfriend, now wife, was like, dude, this song sucks. Like, what's wrong with you? And I was yeah. like, no, dude, listen to this. And it would change, and there's, like, these melody shifts. So we get to cheat. You have to kind of be pretty, you know, you don't have anywhere to hide. But so way, way back. The higher IQ art is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 you are. <laughs> Good. Established. You are essentially the porpoise. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I am but a lowly lemur. <laughs> a lesser animal. I think that could be our first Le- song. Yeah, it mammal. could be a duet. Right, we yeah. Could, could, yeah. Oh, yeah. I the, am a porpoise. And I am a lemur. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have seen it here. So good. Making music. Yeah, making making memories. Um, so anyway, but anyway, do you experiment with it? Like, if if you do, you, have you ever had lyrics where you're like, "All right, just for a thought experiment, I'm gonna like, you know, double the pace. Or I'm gonna do it two times. I don't know the words. That's double it. time. I was so close. You definitely, we're definitely gonna have an awesome time writing. Yeah. <laughs> Put the more orange. Can you do that just a little bit more? Yeah, exactly. One more louder. Yeah. Um, um, so the, do that, you ever really play with it, or just try to break yeah. it in it? So. I think that, um, again, this is a confidence thing. I think that I look up to people like Neil Young or I look up to people like, at a certain point, U2 or or Kendrick Lamar or Kanye or any, like, really great artists. Like, there is a... I am coming late to the confidence game. So when I get something that sounds good, I'm so excited that it sounds good that I'm ready to, like, call it a day. Right. And so it's taken me a lot to kind of, um, to kind of like, I'm still working on letting that go and kind of ex- throwing paint around because I'm also kind of a compulsive perfectionist. And so when I feel like I got something in its sights, but but when you hear a song like "Where the Streets Have No Name," right, which is a great example of a song that is so epic in its scope, and it's all really based on what's happening underneath Bono. It's his voice. And maybe the lyric where the streets have no name, right? Which is sort of an absurd lyric. But there's so much of a push happening musically. There's so much of an expanse and like a cinematic experience that's happening. Mr. Brightside is another one by the Killers where you feel like no matter what's going on, it's like everybody's everybody's on the same page. Like yeah. everybody knows what's up. Uh, Lose Yourself by Eminem. Like there's a thing happening in the track and there's a thing happening in the voice and there's a thing happening in the lyric. And it's like, I don't necessarily, I have yet to really like, like like swim in those waters as much as I'd like because I think I'm 
I think I've been more self-conscious about, oh my God, we, I think we got it right. Like there's a right, right? right. Which is just not right. true. Right. And you sort of feel this way about like, oh my God, I finally got it right. Like, see here how good this sounds. But really what's good sometimes is when things don't give you what they, what, what you want. And when they don't, when they hold back or when they take a breath or when they sort of, and, and I'm a little bit, le- I'm a little bit more self-conscious than, than, than a lot of people. And so my records for me feel very like, here are the lyrics. They're very important. Here is my voice. Here is the, but like to me, records that kind of like slay me most of the time have a little bit more sort of confidence and they kind of maybe suck you in, maybe tell you to stay out and you go in and you want to see what's in there instead of like saying, come in, it's beautiful in here. By the way, I I built this chair like out of my own femur. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, I removed my bones and I made it for you to sit on. Like, come sit. Would you like some lemonade? But like, like when you listen to the first Modern Lovers record or when you listen to the first Violent Femmes record or when you listen to any Kanye West record or when you listen to any, like, it, it's like, they're not, it's just doing its own thing and it's like daring you to show up. And and I'm not necessarily a dare you to show up person, but I my goal in life is to sort of end my life in a dare you to show up way where I'm sort of like fearlessly expressing how I feel and then just sort of giving it to humans and being like, hey, by the way, this is how I'm feeling right now, whether you like it or not. Yeah, meet and, me here. Yeah, so here. that's like the goal. Well, it certainly can often be a totally fearless thing to stop working on something because yeah. there's, there's so much damage you can do. Like whereas if insecurity takes over and you start meddling with your own huh. work, then a month later you look at it and think, oh my God, I ruined it. Dude. It was right there. I had it right there and then I had to move some things around and I got a little jumpy and I lost my confidence. It's, yeah. I mean, it's incredible the relationship between confidence and excellence. Thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. I could fuck up a Beatles reunion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will you, will you play way, way back? Yeah. You want me to play it like right now? Or are we allowed I, I to? I think. Yeah. When I'm singing, like if I've drank too many, uh, LaCroix, which, LaCroix, you can't which is drink full of, anymore. yeah, which is full of like pesticides now. Don't Google LaCroix. Right. What is it? What What exactly kind of pe- cockroach, cockroach pesticide? Cockroach pesticide. Yeah, so don't drink LaCroix. LaCroix. I'll have the fizzy cockro- cockro- cockroach pesticide. Yeah. I'll have the rot my insides. <laughs> yeah. Is there really? I don't know. I no, no, I don't know. <laughs> I lost my phone. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so, um, anyway. Oh, burps. That's super helpful. Thank you. Because we, we, we went into the cockroach thing, and I don't know where that was going to lead. This so. is a super true story. Every time, and I swear to God, like a Pavlovian response, if I have to burp on stage during a song, every time I burp, my brain immediately says, I wonder what Brian Adams would do if this happened. <laughs> I have no idea why. Like, honest to God. Every time, like, I cannot not think it. So I'll burp and I'll be like, and it's started to get so intense now that I'll burp and I'll be like, how does he do it during heaven? <laughs> I, and I don't know Brian Adams. I don't know what he thinks. I never think about Brian Adams, except when I burp on stage in front of other people. Oh my God. Yeah. I wonder if we're all going to now think of Brian Adams every time we burp. We can tweet yeah. He like, oh, thinking about all of younger years. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I love got, that guy. I got it. I got the concept. Oh my God, I love that I can just play this while we're sitting here. That, that was, was almost not a thing. Fun. Hey. All right. Uh, I'm sitting. I don't usually sit and play. So, are you nervous right now? I'm not nervous. I feel a little bit like I'm wearing like four pair of underpants and six shirts. <laughs> I think it's because I'm sitting in this like cocaine chair <laughs> with my with the with the fucking thing. Usually I stand. Anyway, no. What I do like you need? The, what do you need? I don't know. Stand up. I'll do it. God damn it! Can you mute this for a second? I love this chair, by the way. <laughs> the cocaine chair. Doesn't it look like somebody just went, went crazy and was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like meet my little friend. <laughs> so this is a. Uh, Oh, my kid said to me the other day, um, Dada, when you, she's eight, she goes, Dada, when you remodel the upstairs of this house, do I get a say? And I was like, yeah, you get a say, but like it's really going to begin and end with, with us because we're the people paying for it. She's like, well, why don't you give me some examples of what you're thinking? 
And I was like, all right. And she, I go, first off, I was going to get two chairs. She's like, where are you going to put the chairs in here? And I was like, we're going to get that couch and, and take it out of here. She's like, no, you're not. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm going to just, let me just show you the chairs. And I showed them to her and she's like, oh, they're modern. And I was like, no, they're, mi yeah, they're mid-century modern. She's like, whatever, it's got modern in the name. I don't like the way they look. <laughs> and I was like, Ooh. she's like, it's a symmetry thing. And I was like, okay, what chairs do you want? She's like, I'm more of, of like a Victorian or an Edwardian period. And, uh, and she said it could be late or early period Edwardian. I don't care, but I would like that. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, dude, you're definitely not getting any say in the upstairs of the house. And she goes, she goes, well, then I'm not, probably not going to live here very long. <laughs> and I was, like, uh, I was like, we'll see about that. See about that, kid. It's lonely out there, kid. It's like, yeah, it is. You're going to be eating, eating rat poison sandwiches. There's no Edwardian yeah. chairs on the street, kid. Yeah. When you're drinking cockroach water. <laughs> LaCroix. Yeah. Sponsored by LaCroix. The fact that it's not LaCroix is really sticks in my, as a, someone who lived in France. <laughs> uh, très mal, huh? Sorry. I'll play it. Yeah, let's do this. Here I am. I'm going to play this song sitting here. Yeah, you want to know what this song's about? No, I'll just play it. It's okay. However you want to do it. So then. much more fun talking. I, don't, I usually play with Aaron or someone else, you know, like, and now it's like, I feel a little bit like you're watching me. I can't say it because you're here, but something that you do by yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Something you do by yourself that begins... With an M. She's like. My daughter knows what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hell of a day when I walked. I was just like, okay. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! It's the best. I mean, Stop! It's, it's the best. <laughs> I told we you what she said the about. The entire Facebook audience is like, turn it off. I told you what Done. she said. She. The, yeah, 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 they did. <laughs> totally. Totally, they did. They're like, uh, they're like, we'll totally support this crazy right-wing group, but we're going to take down the guy that talked about his daughter's masturbation. <laughs> anyway, uh, I told you that story that my, uh, I told you the story where my daughter said to me, she goes, Dada, she was like five, she's like, Dada, you ever notice that my vulva looks like a cashew? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, like I get, yeah, I guess it does. Like I've, ne yeah, I guess it does actually. She's like, yeah, I almost hit my cashew with my bike today. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody wonders who runs the house, <laughs> she's the queen. <laughs> I'll play the song. <laughs> Last flare from the lifeboat. Last air in my lungs. Right now, even I know that you've got someone. Some people see the diamond, some can only see the flaws. We made perfect little movies that no one ever saw. I didn't know that forever only meant forever till you found someone better. Someday it's gonna hit you You'll see it clear as crystal like a photograph No, oh, no one else gonna love you like that No, oh, no one else gonna love you like that I'll stay in your mind You can always find me in the way, way back No Gonna love you like that Gonna love you like that I'm sure he's easier than I was If you like that sort of thing He looks better with his shirt off Yeah, but can he sing? <laughs> when the sun's setting early And my shadow's getting long the radio just wanna hurt me, puts you in every song. No one else gonna love you like that. No one else gonna.
gonna love you like that yeah, I'll stay in your mind You can always find me in the way, way back and No one else gonna love you like that Gonna love you like that Didn't know that forever only meant forever till you found someone better Someday it's gonna hit you You'll see it clear as crystal like a photograph No, oh, no one else gonna love you like that No, oh, no one else gonna love you like that Yeah, I'll stay in your mind You can always find me in the way, way back It's gonna love you like that Gonna love you like that Gonna love you like that Yeah so these guys are holding hands and looking all mushy at each Aww. other when you were doing that. And I, I wondered that. how happy that must make you that you're like part of people's soundtracks. I like I like that. I, I like people sometimes come up and they'll be like, you know, I had a really hard year and your music saved my life or whatever. But that's like not true. You know, like uh, they saved their lives. They just had my music on, which I'm super down with. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like I, I love that. Uh, so I, I dig it. I think that's the best part about... Uh, getting to write songs and then people get to take them as their own because they stop kind of being about me. Once I finish them, they're kind of like, they're not really mine all that much as much as they become other people's in a cool way. Yeah, and, and I, like yeah. you said before, they change over time. So, yeah. you know, you have some life experiences and you hear the words differently and, you know, like reader response criticism, if you will. Oh. It's this thing that we learned about in grad school that we were talking about a little bit before which is, you know, there's all these ways to think about literature, but also everything that's coming into you. All the stories you're hearing, all the music you're listening to, all the movies you're watching, and you can hear it. Uh, there's feminist criticism, so you can hear everything. There's gender criticism, you can hear everything about. There's Freudian criticism, there's Marxist criticism, so everything can be about economics and class. But the one that made sense to me the most was reader response, which is that it's there's this incredible, incredible chemistry between the person who's receiving the art and the art that makes it such that the thing between the person and the art is singular. Yeah. Because it's this chemistry of like you had a cold when you read it and you read it in the rain and your father had just died and your girlfriend, you'd just fallen in love for the first time and and then all that gets woven into your experience of that song or that uh, piece of writing or whatever and it's so... I mean, I think that's like a little miracle. Oh, it's honestly. the best. It's what I think is the best part about music is that uh, it's all about my experience with Octung Baby or Lou Reed New York. You know, it's like, and what's really, f that's why I get kind of bummed out when certain artists like kind of you feel like they didn't try very hard and they sort of give you something that feels kind of cheap. Um, I really think that you're, you're, giving, you're giving a part of yourself that's obviously complex you know what I mean? Like there's because we're complex beings and you can boil it down to like a certain thing. And sometimes that really works. Don't stop believing, you know, that kind of thing like mm -hmm. really works. But a lot of people will kind of cheat and cheapen the the art by not really going there. And it's fun to connect, like you said, as a listener, to connect to something that is so individual to the person who wrote it. But yet you feel like you're a part of it. Like, yeah, and then you've layered on your own. thing, Yeah. And then it's just yours. There's a song by, uh, there's a bunch of songs, but like Jason Isbell has a song called Elephant that's very, uh, kind of like when you, you know, like you read a Raymond Carver story or something. Yeah. Those are all very, you know, you can't, you see the people. I don't know anybody from the Pacific Northwest who's an alcoholic who can't keep a job who, you know what I mean? But like, and so none of those people related to me the way he was delivering them, like as individuals, but like the, 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 the sauce inside in yeah. the, in the nooks and the crannies. And then all of a sudden, you connect to it. That's what this Chimamanda book does. It's like, I don't know anything about the Nigerian Civil War, 
but you but she gets very specific she's an incredible writer like you like it's like she writes specific but i find myself connecting to this thing that has nothing to do with me right. but has everything to do with me right you know what i mean it's they have desires and they yeah. have wants and they have ambitions and yeah and just yeah. yeah yeah and uh so that's why it's a bummer when you hear sometimes you hear a song you know like where you can tell that the person kind of phoned it in a little bit yeah. you know what i mean and i always feel like oh well you could have tried a little harder than that uh will you play sadness since we talked about it yeah and also for her Hell yes. What's your name? This is for Marissa. Yeah, it is. I have all my notes. Do you want to stand up? Do you want me to move that chair? No, I feel I like you're kind of trapped there because you know how I he like, like I sort you know of feel like he I'm likes to do that thing with his legs. Playing it. He does. He does. He does like to do the thing. I'm just saying. I'll do it like this. <laughs> Don't break the Coke chair. The, the, don't break the Coke chair. Yeah, cocaine chair. There's a song. Cocaine chair. <laughs> I was sitting there in my cocaine chair. It was incredible. <laughs> cocaine chair sounds such like a 70s mm-hmm. epic. Mm-hmm. I'll play Sadness. Okay. Uh, I think this is the key. Yeah. This is a half step down guitar. So I'm a little confused. I don't know what I'm doing. I've been standing still. Spend my life burning bridges. Digging holes to fill. You gotta get a low, oh, oh. You gotta get a low, oh, oh, to get high. You gotta get a low, oh, oh. You gotta get a low, oh, oh, to get high. I can feel you with me in the darkness. Reaching out a hand to pull me through. Sadness used to think that it owed me now. Sadness, it's gotta share me with you. You gotta get a low, oh, oh. You gotta get a low, oh, oh. To get high. I don't know how you do it. You're the calm at sea. Find flowers in the ruin and the good in me. You gotta get a low, oh, oh. You gotta get a low, oh, oh. To get high. You gotta get a low, oh, oh. You gotta get a low, oh, oh. To get high. I can feel you with me in the darkness Reaching out a hand to pull me through Sadness used to think that it owed me Now sadness, it's gotta share me with you You gotta get a low, oh, oh You gotta get low, oh, oh To get high You gotta get a low, oh, oh, you gotta get a low, oh, oh, to get high. You gotta get lost to let go, gotta get lost to let go, gotta get lost to get free for a minute, see clear for a minute, let go, gotta get lost to let go, you gotta get lost to get free for a minute, see clear for a minute. Really good. <laughs> you are. That's, that's nice like to hear. Really Thanks. beautiful. Thanks. It's fun to do. Yeah. Singing. Singing. And Singing and strumming. Playing. Yeah, the old banjo. Um. So there are a couple other songs. In mine. Yeah. You had this great line that says, "By the end, I was practiced. You kissed me like an actress." Yeah. 
And it made me think about all the phoniness in relationships before you find your person. Yeah. Someone always likes someone more than the other person. And then the other person's always being a little bit phony and you always know you're going to break up before you do. And, Oh, it just like kind of crushed me. It took me back to that place where you, people are not being straight with one another. It's a bummer when you think back to what it was like before you had a person who you could kind of count on. Uh, man, I picked some fucking bad people. <laughs> That was like a superpower of mine. Like, I just would pick people that were like, this is definitely not going to work. Let's go. Yeah. Should we go out for one year or two <laughs> yeah, years? Yeah, yeah. Should I tattoo I your name? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was going nowhere, but I think I'll last for about a year. It's true. Yeah. So maybe I could get a tattoo with you. <laughs> and then we could. Maybe just your first letter of your first name, <laughs> just to keep it flexible. So, yeah, that, that song is about an actual, they're all kind of about a person or a, a, a mixture of people, but. Um, yeah, I thought the person that the song is kind of about, that line about an act, that, that person never, it was never like kiss me like an actress. It was never, it never got there. It was always felt very real. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I had that line, practice, actress, running lines. It's uh, I like the way words work, like just like you do, mm -hmm. um, where you can sort of say like, um, uh, what's the beginning of that line? Um, I was out getting dinner, got a text from your sister. It's been a while. I like, I was out getting dinner, got a text from your sister. I just thought like all the way those all alliterations work yeah. together. And then uh, she said, you've been dating some kid who's amazing and how was I, right? And then it says, um, by, uh, by the end I was practice. You kissed me like an actress, running lines. Um, I heard, heard you move to the sunset, a queen and a sublet, a whole new life. And there's a place here, obviously, that we all know called the sunset, which is like one of my favorite neighborhoods. And uh, and it's sort of like it's very poetic. It's foggy, and mm -hmm. and I like the idea of someone moving to the sunset to start over in a sublet, and sort of like, uh, and that was none of that's true. <laughs> and I like the idea that people that didn't know it was the sunset would think that like you moved to the sunset, like the happy part of your right. existence right. or whatever. <laughs> um, and so, but yeah, I like the actress. I, I'm a big fan of like that kind of thing. Uh, that that will go a long way for me, and I, I could spend days months tweaking words so that they feel like they at least fit together in a way where maybe like all four of the line in the first line all four of the first four words rhyme with the first four words in the second line yeah, you know yeah. like i can really it's, i can go myopic do you read poetry you must i do yeah. i do I, I read poetry and i have trouble with it actually i'm not a big huge poetry fan uh -huh. um because it's a lot of like at least i mean it's always about like horses or like <laughs> barns or wagons or I mean like new poetry like there's a lot of great new poetry yeah. like um, but like all the stuff we learned when we were kids it's always like like uh, and then the dew on the lily and it's supposed to represent you know or whatever it's too much representing I need a little bit more direct <laughs> although I did have an incredible poetry teacher at Pomona um, who was reading Ozymandias and started to cry while he was reading it. And I remember just being moved to tears in the middle of this, oh. this like thing because you could tell that he was just like struck by it. And Ozymandias is such a fucking poem, you know, like such a crazy... Oh, sure. Who doesn't know <laughs> that one? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like... But anyway, so... Yeah. So, yeah, I like poetry. Oh, shit. Yeah. Play mine, play mine. Oh, you want me to play mine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody doing okay? <laughs> All right. What time is it in the world? Uh, Matt has to leave at exactly 8.15 because he has to take his family to SFO. Yeah, I got to do an airport drive. <laughs> so, like, don't even try to talk. Yeah, yeah, to so I'm going to bust, I'm going to lift the shit it. out of this place. Right. <laughs> they would be out. Uh, let's see if I can get it right. Okay. That's not it. I should have brought a guitar that was in the right key. That's it. I was out getting dinner. I got a text from your sister. It's been a while. Wrong key. I'm going to do it up like that. There it is. I was out getting dinner. I got a text from your sister. It's been a while. She said, you've been dating. This is a true part of the story. 
The true part is, I got a text from your sister. It's been a while. She said you've been dating some kid who's amazing. And how how, how are you doing? And then it's just like fuck you. Why are you texting me? Why are you telling me this? The sister in the situation was always stirring trouble, being like, "Hey, how's it going? My sister's dating an awesome guy." And I was like, "It's nice to hear from you." He doesn't have tits like you do. Yeah, he doesn't. (laughs) Doesn't have beautiful man mounds like me. That's what I call my tits. (laughs) Copyright Matt Nathanson, 2018. Man Mounds. That's the name of my next solo record. Man. That's the name of my band, actually. Matt Man and Man, Man Mounds. <laughs> so good. Any, but nobody's coming to these shows. <laughs> We're doing a tour like this where it's just going to be acoustic and talking, and people are just like fucking selling their tickets right now as fast as Great, they can. The word's going to get out. Just, All just they like, do is talk. Dude, he literally he plays like one song. He's, he talked about his daughter's c- clitoris. <laughs> It's like, no, I talked about her fucking vulva. <laughs> Two totally different things. Oh. But apparently most I'm men in America do not know female anatomy. I think we should give her a free book. You're the best. <laughs> if you want to just set up like a PayPal account for your therapy, I'll fund it pretty much straight away. We, we could do a two for one though, because we gotta we get, yeah. Oh, sh- <laughs> that's so good. This is mine. I'll try that again. I was out getting dinner. I got a text from his sister. It's been a while. She said, You've been dating some kid who's amazing. How was I? Maybe I'm stunning, maybe you're nothing Maybe I'm spending every day satisfied Maybe I'm through this, maybe the truth is Maybe there's nothing around here that shines like it did, like it did when you were Mine, 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 mine Ooh, 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 ooh By the end, I was practice. Yeah, you kissed me like an actress. Running lines. I heard you move to the sunset. A queen and a sublet. A whole new life. Maybe I'm stunning. Maybe you're nothing, nothing. Maybe I'm spending every day satisfied. Maybe I'm through this. Maybe the truth is. Maybe there's nothing around here that shines like it did, like it did when you were mine, 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 mine. Ooh, 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 ooh. mine, 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 mine. Ooh, 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 ooh. All the way is I try to be right when you were mine. And all Try to rewind when you were mine in all the ways I try to rewind when you were mine in all the ways I try to rewind when you were mine in Good. Fun. That's a little nod to Prince. You know what? I thought of him when you were mine. Yeah, that's that. And then the falsetto. You always feel like everybody tries to, everybody wants to be Prince. If they don't, they're, they're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you have a line in Long Distance Runner. Oh, yeah. And I thought was so sad. By the way, Thank this you. woman over there sang every word. Like, you've already got this locked down. I love it. Yeah. Um, I'll pay you the 50 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank but you for showing up. That was great. <laughs> Get in before 8.15, though, or else you won't. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can drive you to the airport if you need to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
No problem. She's going somewhere now, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing. Um, oh, shit. Anyway, you had this line that says, it takes me forever to see the good in people who see the good in me. Yeah, that's Which, true. That struck me as really sad, although I relate. Sad. That's my sad heart. <laughs> that's why it you it's sad, because it's part of my sit, sad heart that I'm singing, hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> But I think, do you have imposter syndrome? Do I have imposter syndrome? Like, no, have I just have like low self-esteem. <laughs> <laughs> Not really imposter you don't syndrome. Have just high like enough just zero. To yeah, have yeah, yeah. You got to be think you're somebody to think you're not somebody else. Right. So no, I don't have imposter syndrome. Uh, I feel like I'm like one click away from like like a Starbucks job. Which is no, shi- I'm not shining on Starbucks. It fucking, it's awesome. But I really do feel like every time I'm like, well, maybe this year, maybe this year it's going to be that time where I'm going to have to fucking call it a day and get a real job again. Uh, so yeah, I don't I, that think one. it's going to be that time, do you? Well, no, but I mean, like, it, you don't really, you kind of, I mean, there's only a few of us here that can, re- you can't really determine that. Yeah. But I appreciate it. I appreciate right. your positivity. I do. I love it. And I appreciate you showing up. But God damn it, you're going to have to show up a lot more if, if the bad things in my head happen the way that they're supposed to happen. So, no, but anyway, yeah. So, no, I'm good. It's good. How you Will doing? you play Long Distance Runner? Yeah. Long Distance Runner is one of my favorite lyrics on the record because uh, I had this line. I have a couple great lines, and I'm not saying that like great, like I'm awesome, I want you all to know, but I'm saying like I have these lines that I really think are great, and, and one of them was I grew up believing love was a grudge, uh, which I think is just fucking true. And then, uh, and home was a place where you lived with your guard up was the rhyme that I came up with to go along with it. But I thought, grew up believing love was a grudge is so great because like, that's totally how, um, how I learned to do love. That it was like something you held against somebody and you fucking made them know it. And if they didn't show up for you in the way that you needed them to, then you would, you know, I love you. Don't you know this? And it took me a long time to realize only uh, I've been married for I've been in a relationship for 20, 27 years and uh, married for a bunch of that and stuff and not not the best partner for a little bit of that. And and uh, and it took me a while to even realize that my wife was kind of the awesomest human on the planet. And that's kind of what that line took me forever and ever to see the good in the people who see the good in me. It's like um, I was really shooting people full of holes that believed in me in a true way, like really showed up and was, and were like, um, Hey, you're worth it. And I'd be like, fuck you, you know? And they'd be like, <laughs> okay. And then I'd be like, I'll show you how worth it I am. I'm going to do this, you know? And then they'd be like, uh, okay, you're still worth it, but you're a dick. <laughs> and then it was like, uh, and it just kind of kept going like that, where it was like, it was like, oh, I'll show you what worth it is, you know? And then, and then I realized like, oh my God, unconditional love is actually something that's not just a fucking bumper sticker. In like, uh, and oh my God, you can actually love someone and, and like stick with them and, and like, what a rad idea. And it kind of blew my mind. And, um, I just, you know, like we talked about, about coming down different shoots. Like it's, it's hard to, even when people do things that are really shitty, like, um, like in, I know this is like, again, but like, uh, uh, I think the way that humans, we're in a weird place now where we have, um. I can say this, where the president literally said what he said about grabbing women by the genitals, and he's the president. Like, he became the president after he said that, and people validated that uh, and said, ah, we all talk, it's locker room talk or whatever, and, and he's now the president of the United States, which has sort of, like, perverted that place just because I think you can't do that. You, c- you can't be a coach, you can't be a parent, you can't be a leader and be that much of a fucking asshole. And so, and like, no offense to anybody who voted for him, like, truly, you, because everybody comes, but I have empathy, because that guy, we're all born, and we're given, like, a very limited uh, toolbox to work with, uh, because I know I'm giving my kid a limited toolbox to work with, because I'm limited. Mm-hmm. And then everybody comes down into this arena together, down these shoots of their growing up, where people learn that, like, they learn, they grow up learning that black people are not as smart or as powerful as white people. And then they, there they are. And that's all they've learned. They've come down the chute. And it's hard enough as humans to pull it together enough to fucking function. So then imagine what it's like when you have those limited tools, right? You're like, somebody says, I need you to help me put this window in. And you show up and you're like, I got a hammer. And you're just like, Psh! and you're like, dude, what the, who puts a hammer in a window? And they're like, that's what I learned. And so it's like, how can you... Um, 
you can't hate it, you, it's hard to it's hard to live life and really be you can be upset with the way people act but you got to have empathy for the fact that like everybody's limited even if they don't know they are and uh and i grew up not really understanding like anything about love my family worked like it was sort of like love was sort of like raw meat that you sort of threw into the center and everybody fought over it and then you whoever was triumphant and then it was like it just wasn't and that was they tried their best but like that was what they knew and that's what they learned and they didn't transcend that and then they gave it to us and then we learned and we and it's our job as humans to transcend the things that our parents didn't do right um and most people can't because it's hard enough to like function. It's hard enough to get a job that pays you enough money. It's hard enough to find a person who you can count on who's not going to fuck you over that can be your partner. It's hard enough to like exist. And so Long Distance Runner for me is a song that's kind of like a, about my version of that, which is like, yeah, man, I was a terrible person to be married to. I was a terrible person to be in a relationship with. I was a terrible person to be a friend with uh, because I didn't know how any of that worked. I was a narcissist and I believed that like, because I was so desperate. That was my desperation button. And so it just kind of comes down to that. And so Long Distance Runner is, is about that. And it's tough because in a time like now where people have very little empathy for people who are seen as evil, right? Like cruel, evil people, whoever it is, the other side of the aisle or whatever that is, like people who kill babies if you don't, if you believe that's the thing or people that, everybody's got an idea of what they think right and wrong is. But everybody's moral compass is different. And everybody has... It's impossible to get everybody on the same page. And so if you don't have, it doesn't mean you have to condone it. It doesn't mean you have to, you don't stand up for something you believe in. But we live in this time now where people really want to pick sides and they want to be fucking mad. And it feels really good to be mad. And there's some people that it's like rightfully so in a, in a system that is, uh, that's rigged against a certain uh, color of skin, certain gender, all that stuff. Like that's real, no matter what anybody says. Though, like, and people that are un oppressed by that deserve to fucking stand up and fucking scream about it. But, but it's like, I don't even know where I'm going with it. It's just like the idea of the idea of empathy is like the only thing that's really going to save us. And I don't know how, because it's like right now we're divided into these teams, and every time there's another game, which is what the Kavanaugh thing was, every time there's another game, everybody shows up in their jerseys and everybody yells, and everybody believes what they believe, and we don't go anywhere. And like, I don't know what the answer is, and it's like, because I know how I feel, and I know that I'm indignant and pissed, and like, to the, but I don't know what the answer is. So anyway, long, uh, long story short, Long Distance Runner is kind of addressing my very, very, very big limitations when it comes to humans. Uh, good story. <laughs> Bye. Oh fuck! How long till I have to? I got like no time. You have two minutes and ten seconds. So it's, do it double time. Shit. <laughs> Maybe I can leave it. Can I leave it eight twenty? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so good. I was like, fuck yes. Yeah. She said yeah. She looked totally official. I know that was awesome. Um. Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay. Grew up believing love was a grudge and home was a place where you lived with your guard up. People keep saying memories fade. Mine are all drunk and they just keep calling. Well, I hear the gun go off crowd go wild you're still here mile after mile oh the past is a long distance runner and i'm falling further and further behind yeah the past is a long distance runner going round in my mind 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 round in my mind miles looking for love People go miles looking for love. We go miles looking for love. People go miles. I need some music. I need some sleep. I need a love or somebody to move me. Took me forever and ever to see the good in the people who see the good in me. Oh, the past is a long-distance runner 
And I'm falling further and further behind Oh, the past is a long distance runner Going round in my mind It's going round in my mind Miles looking for love We're going miles looking for love We're going miles looking for love We're going miles I hear the gun go off Thunder crack My head says go Don't ever look back and The past is a long distance runner I'm falling further and further behind Yeah, the past is a long distance away It's going round in my mind It's going round in my mind Miles looking for love We're going miles looking for love We go miles looking for love We go miles We go miles looking for love Miles looking for love We go miles looking for love We go miles Cool. Fun. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Did you, is there anything we didn't get? Yeah, I need oh, like shit. three more songs, oh, yeah. but you know, I don't want to get on the wrong side of Bridget. And I Noah. know I'll get killed. Uh, uh, who, who came a long way to be here today? Berkeley? That's not that far. <laughs> who else? Who else? Detroit. Iowa. Okay, uh, Minnesota. I, we have three books. This book just came out. It's called To Obama. It's really beautiful. It's about the ten letters that Obama would read every day and carry with him as his life as president. And I really love it, so I just wanted to give it. So here's Minnesota. Who else do we have? Denver? Bernal Heights. D.C. D.C. And Boston. There we go. Pass those back, please. Um We'll see you guys online. Oh yeah, wait. Let's let's talk up the book club one more time for yeah, everybody who just it. tuned in who didn't tune out when I started talking politics. Should I should do this again. Well, we're gonna do it as the book club. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about books, and we're gonna do it like this, where we and we're sit gonna around make Matt and sing every time. I told him. I told him. Well, I'll pick songs for him that sort of go with the themes of the book, and he'll sing them. I have my song about. It's like having my own wind-up doll. Yeah. <laughs> Does as. I feel like, does anybody have any, qu is there anything that anybody's wanted to ask that we didn't get to or anything like that? I mean, I, it's not going to be awesome. She's worried about your wife. And I don't have my watch anymore, which is sort of because I fell off my bike and it dug into my uh, wrist and then broke. Uh, and so, what? I was not necessarily wearing my helmet. Uh, but uh, while I pack up, I feel like we could talk about, uh, I don't know. Have you given any more thought to steal pants? To steal pants? Oh, st what was my steel pans? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> apparently, I haven't. Uh, I love that. That might be a question that's slightly too uh, involved for my brain, but yes, I remember you saying it, and I loved it, and I wanted to make it happen, but now I can't remember exactly what it was. But uh, yeah, so but it's good to see you. Uh, when somebody actually loves you, that helps. When like when somebody actually shows you real love, it's pretty great, as I'm sure you know. I didn't know. And so it was like when somebody kind of shows up and doesn't leave, and no matter how hard you try and shake them off, they stick around. It's like a that's a pretty. F it's like all of a sudden you realize uh, love is pretty great and intimate people. Intimates like there's only a few of those, and your team like it's. I always thought that everybody was my people. That was like how I grew up thinking like uh, as much as I didn't like people, I thought like everybody, I, I was so wanted so badly to connect that I would just, uh, I would always overshare or get, let thieves into the temple of myself and kind of be like, come on in, like here's this. And then I would sort of be disturbed and bummed when they would kind of not do as I wanted them to do or treat me poorly. And so what I realized was like when I, Really, when I figured out through my relationship that, like, oh, my God, love exists and that, like, my people can be a very small group. It can be, like, two or one. You know what I mean? Like, my person. And that, like, what I don't need to look in others 
I can just accept others for the limitations that we all have. And, and because we're all sort of these resources to each other in a way that's sort of cold, but it's not, it's kind of true. And so it's like, but we're limited. And so once somebody shows you their cards and you realize who they are and you don't ask them for things that they're not capable of, relationships are really great. But when you have an intimate, you can ask them to do things and push them further and ask them to be different and move harder and go with you and follow you or you follow them. And like, you can only need one of those. You know what I mean? Like, and that made me realize like, oh my God, love. And then when, when I had a kid, all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, this is wild. This is what all those people that I told not to tell me anything about their experience <laughs> were talking about. Like, I just sort of like, man, I dig you a lot and I just think you're the best. And like, no matter what you do, it doesn't stop me from thinking that you're the best. You know what I mean? Like, you, that it doesn't make stop me from thinking that you're, that I, you're, you're tremendous. That I can't believe that you're on this earth, like shining and like a fucking orb of greatness. You know what I mean? Like, even when you do awful things, you know what I mean? Like, which is not, and and there's at eight, there's not a lot of awful things that happen. But I'm I'm sort of looking into the future. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure that, like, I'm pretty sure I can hang with, like, anything that comes up because I just think that, like, humans are really great. Like, as, as fucked up as we are, it's like we're really capable of awesome stuff. And it's really easy when you have your intimates to, to bounce that off of. But when you're trying to bounce it off the world, we were talking about this, like, when you're, when you're wanting, like, somebody that you don't know to, to make a decision that's somehow going to help you, that's a really depressing place to be. Because it's like that you can't count on anybody. You can't count on somebody to do something. But with your intimates, you can. And that's what taught me about love. Very long-winded answer to a good question. Yeah. What's one thing that would make your life easier? T teleporting. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs>